I know what y'all about to say, you know what I'm saying? Um, another black man dead by the hands of a white racist cop. I know you all outraged. I see you all out there in Houston, Atlanta, uh, Minneapolis, Los Angeles, New York, destroying, you know, squad cars, um, looting, burning down buildings and stuff like that. And I know for, you know, some of you all, you think that that is the solution. That, that, that is going to be an effective method in order to bring about change. And that's far from the furthest truth. Um, in the 90s, Rodney King got his ass beat by, I think it was about four or five cops. And they went out and they ride. You know, um, this has been going on for eons and eons. You know, you have black people that get upset because a, a white racist cop has killed a black man or a black woman or uh, a black son or a black daughter and what black people have done throughout centuries of time is they either uh, peacefully protested or they protested in a violent way you know such as destroying properties and cars and stuff like that as if that's going to bring about change neither one of those two uh protests are going to bring about any change they push and promote you to peacefully uh protest and that doesn't bring about any change and it's crazy because the same type of advice that they try to give you is the same type of advice that they won't give to them to themselves because when 9 11 happened and osama bin laden so uh, so called uh, brought down the World Trade Center buildings. Guess what? And and killed thousands of of Americans. America didn't peacefully protest. No, they took, they got their 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 army and they went over to Iraq or Iran. I think it was Iran, looking for one person. But while in the process of them looking for that one person, they killed thousands of Iranians. So now that like, peaceful protests don't amount to anything because nobody's listening to people that peacefully protest. They did that, that stuff in the civil rights movement. You know, with Martin Luther King. While they were walking, your, your children, your sons, your daughters, your, your parents, your fathers and, 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 and mothers and grandparents, your grandmother and your grandfather, while they were walk, marching peacefully, protesting, they got rocks thrown at them. They got punched in the face. They got sticks hit, hit, you know, got hit with sticks. Police officers were, hit, were hitting them with batons. So all that peacefully protesting mess is out the door. It is, it is ineffective. Just like protesting violently, meaning you're destroying property, burning buildings, looting, that's not doing anything as well. Those two protests are not going to stop the cops from killing black people. Those two protests are not going to bring the black people that have been killed by white racist cops back. It's just not going to happen. I'm trying to tell you for those that are young that haven't seen this before this has been going on for years this is the way that black people react when a black man is killed by the hands of a white racist cop or just a white racist civilian and this is going to continue to go on history is going to continue to repeat itself until America is no more let me explain something to you, being that you are unaware of why white racist people kill black people. Check this out. I used to live in the hood. And in the hood, I had roaches. And every time I saw a roach, I wasn't compa I wasn't compassionate. I I didn't I didn't care about that roach. I had no feelings, absolutely none about that roach the only thing that i wanted to do 
was kill that roach and get it out of my house. I didn't look at that roach as a living entity. So I killed it. This is the same way that that man that killed Floyd George looked at Floyd George as a roach and not as a human being. And this is the reason why it's imperative that we come up with an effective method in order to nip this stuff in the bud. And my effective method, you may not like it, but it's a method that has been put on the table several times. This is nothing new. I didn't come up with this. It's going back to Africa. Blacks making a massive exodus out of this racist country. Because white people are not going to give up their white privilege in order that black people have the same type of privileges that white people have. They're not. The only thing white people are going to do is sit back and say, that's a shame. Or they'll make an excuse why the cops are killing black people. Or they'll say, you need to vote. Like Joe Biden said, if you don't for vote for me, you ain't black. He didn't say, if you don't vote for me, you aren't black. He used a ebonic term, you ain't black. As if he know what black being black is. The audacity. Listen to your president. What did he say? You thugs out there looting. It's time for some shooting. How many times is white racist America, not all white people are, are, are racist, but there are quite a lot. How many times is white racist America going to tell you right in front of your face that we don't want you here and you not listen? Period. The resources are in Africa. Everybody wants in in Africa. Without Africa, no other countries will be able to survive. But you all want to stay here in a burning house? Rome fell. Greece fell and America will be the next. Our families hung on trees. Listen to this. Listen to this. I don't think y'all are understanding this. You know how you know trees are, they 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 exist they, for hundreds upon hundreds of years. So guess what? If you're in North Carolina, if you're in Georgia, if you're in South Carolina, if you're in Florida, guess what? I'm pretty sure more than nine times out of ten, what nine times out of ten, these big trees that you see that still remain here in these southern states your ancestors hung on those trees and it wasn't too long ago I say go back to Africa the Africans want us there the culture's there everything is there yeah they true indeed they show you pictures of of uh, babies with fat stomachs and they're hung, they're starving. They show you pictures of of the hood and everything, but they won't tell you that a lot of white people and East Indians live in South Africa. They won't tell you that the Germans, the British, the Chinese—they're buying up Africa. But black people refuse to move back to a place that they are originally from but want to stay in a place that the people that have, let's be real, had conquered this land, that are not indigenous to this land, have came and conquered the people, have said, literally said, we don't want you here. Do you know, when I look for places to stay in different states, I have to sit back and consider, I can't live there. Because it's not safe for black people to live. Like, take for example, living in Forsyth County in, in, a, uh, in Atlanta. It's not safe. They'll tell you that. 
hey that's my thoughts you can continue doing what you want to do that's my solution back to africa because when you go back to Africa, I had a small taste of it. I went to the West Indies and Nevis, and everybody was black. The cops were black. Every the, the, we were prom, we were the prom, prom, prom race there. The white people were the minorities. And guess what? Little do you know, for those that haven't traveled, when white people go to other countries, they know how to act. When they see a black cop with an AK-47 strapped around his chest. So don't get it twisted. White people act out when they're in their home. But when they go over somebody else's house, when they go to Africa, or when they go to the Caribbeans, and where, where black people are in control, black people are, are it's, it's, the whole government is all black. They act accordingly. Trust and know that. So... Hey, you can do what you want to do, man. This house is slowly but surely burning down. Now, either you want to evacuate or you want to burn with it.